We are now live. Awesome. So I guess that means that uh, we're calling the meeting to order. Um, looking at our agenda to start, uh, Emma, I'm assuming we have a roll call. That's correct, yes. Alrighty. <clears throat> so then uh, just need to make sure that we don't have any conflicts of interest. So I will call the question, are there any declarations of conflicts of conflicts of interest for any of the items on tonight's agenda? Seeing none, um, we'll move into um, our rules of procedure. Now, Emma, did you want me to review that? Yes, please. Okay, so um, we're just gonna go over our uh, some rules of procedure here. Um, first off, just wanna remind uh, the community, the committee and uh, our viewing public uh, just of a couple of procedural rules for our virtual meetings, um, just to help them operate as efficiently as possible. Um, so all members, uh, please try and keep your mics muted during the meeting to reduce feedback unless you are the one speaking. Um, all web cameras for committee members shall be turned on. Obviously, um, we, uh, we have quorum now with members that do have cameras and Mark um, will be participating uh, via audio. Um, Mark, I don't know if you have a method to um, send a message if you look to, to jump into uh, speak or not. Um, just because I've been taking kind of visual cues to, to put together a speaking order, but uh, we'll see what we can do for that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, uh, for anybody that wishes to speak, um, I'll kind of try to track with visual cues, but there is the raise hand button um, on the bottom right hand side. Um, and then uh, I think that's managed by Emma. Um, just a reminder as well that the meetings are recorded and streamed live to the city's YouTube channel. And in the event of a connection or service interruption um, that would affect quorum, uh, we can kind of pause until we get that back for up to 15 minutes to regain uh, quorum. So uh, I know we had a meeting where the power went out, which was an interesting hurdle for five minutes, but hopefully we can uh, avoid that tonight. Um, so moving right along, we do have two presentations and a number of other items to get through tonight. Um, and so based on that, uh, ask Chuck Beach to come forward here in a minute. I'd just like to say uh, thank you to Chuck for joining us tonight, um, as he does every year to speak with us about Earth Week events. So Chuck, when you're ready, your mic's not on. I'm just pulling up um, the slideshow right now, Chuck. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. It's uh, good to be back. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, uh, I was the first uh, chairman of the Environmental Policy Advisory Committee many uh, years ago. Uh, I worked at Johnson's, SC Johnson's for 31 years and when I retired, I decided to become the foundation man. And by that, I mean, I've, I'm on the James Hillier Foundation. I was on the Brant Waterways Foundation, the Ontario Trillium Foundation, the Brant Community Foundation currently, the Canadian Chestnut Council and the TD Friends of the Environment Foundation on their grants, uh, local grants committee. So that's me. Uh, the other thing I did in my spare time, uh, first slide there, I can't uh, see it. Sorry, I'm just readjusting. Okay. Great, thank you. That's right, super. So, uh, in August of 2007, while I was the chair of the Environmental Policy uh, Committee, um, I decided we needed to do something during Earth Week. And so I, I formed the Earth Week Event Committee to uh, promote, encourage, sponsor local environmental activities around Earth Day, which is April 22nd, and to catalog local events. Next, please. 
So Earth Day, of course, is April 22nd each year. It was started by a U.S. Uh, senator, and it was designed to inspire awareness and appreciation for the Earth's environment. And this year marks the 51st anniversary of Earth Day. Next. And of course, we don't, uh, you know, people don't do things alone, and we put together a committee of good folks to uh, help us orchestrate the events that we undertake. Next. So, uh, Earth Week 2020, big event, big thing, 50th anniversary of Earth Day, spring events, fall events, and of course, everything was canceled because of COVID. Very disappointing for, for me. However, moving on, uh, we did do one thing, and that was in the fall, uh, in between uh, the uh, the waves. Uh, a few of us got together, and we put uh, an American chestnut tree gene node down at the front of the uh, Brantford Compost Center, which is adjacent to uh, the landfill. And for those of you who don't know, the American chestnut uh, used to comprise about 30% of the forest in this area until it was wiped out uh, by a blight at the start uh, of the 1900s. And so the Canadian Chestnut Council is working to restore uh, the American chestnut to the landscape, and they're doing that by uh, crossbreeding. So we were able to get 100, uh, uh, roughly 100 trees in the ground uh, there in September, and that was the only event undertaken uh, as far as tree planting goes last year. So next, please. We had a great uh, lineup of stars again this year and they're all canceled. So uh, there might uh, uh, be still something out of the restore, I don't know. Uh, working with uh, Rochelle Romney, we're talking about having some items come up in the virtual Earth Week, uh, yet to be determined. Rochelle, are you on the line? Yes, I am. Hello, Chuck. Would you like to comment on that at all? Um, yeah, I think we're still working through the details of what our virtual event will be. So I don't actually have much to share about that yet, but I'm hoping to maybe share some videos and some information sharing during Earth Week about some different uh, aspects of, uh, you know, reducing waste and tree planting and that sort of thing. Awesome. Okay, so next slide, please. So uh, what tree planting events will take place this spring as far as public involvement or high school involvement, and those are two of the major events we normally have. Probably nothing. Next slide, please. However, there are opportunities. So uh, there's a project we've been working on for some time since 2012, and that's called the New Forest in the City. And uh, over time, you know, we put together a five-year plan and we put 60,000 trees in the New Forest. And uh, this year we're going to do some contract planting in areas that uh, need uh, a little, uh, well, I'll talk more about that in a second. And we're trying to uh, switch the public events uh, to the fall. Back, please. We're trying to switch some events uh, to the fall. And uh, there's a the climate change action plan that council approved that was brought by forward by Rochelle, uh, allotted thirty thousand dollars per year for five years to plant trees, which is something new that hasn't been there before. So I'll talk a little bit more about that. Next slide, please. So this is the new forest in the city, located at the southwest corner of Garden Ave and the 403. And if you look at the map there, you can see the various years in which the individual areas were planted. We missed some, and sometimes things didn't go necessarily that well. Uh, we had a bad spring, so more died. And that's why we're undertaking this contract planting. So this uh, spring, the seedlings, uh, mixed conifers uh, will be planted in those areas that still could use a little uh, more trees uh, and we'll be planting over 5,500 uh, trees. Next slide, please. As you can see by the red line there, this is uh, the forest and 
Uh, Mr. Vacano has put in quite an industrial complex at the north end. And uh, if you're a nature lover, heaven forbid, uh, I would call it a bit of an eyesore. So one of the areas we're putting in those, uh, we're putting in four rows of trees along that red line above what I'll call a buffer of the mixed conifer. Next slide, please. And uh, we're also looking at, uh, oh, let's see, uh, on the southeast corner where the 2014 planting is, that's around another company. We're looking at putting in a buffer there also. Uh, this is the new forest and there's an area that wasn't planted and it wasn't planted because it wasn't on the original map that we were uh, given. And if you go to that, next slide please. The area outlined in blue is what I call the tabletop. It's a raised area and that's the area that wasn't included in the original tree planting. And it's in that area that we hope to do some uh, planting this fall. And I had a, a call from the Rotary Club uh, three days ago and uh, they're up for it. And maybe we'll have, if we're allowed, we'll have the public engaged too. It's uh, one acre in size and could take about a thousand trees. Next slide, please. So the third item I wanted to talk was about this uh, money that was given through via the uh, climate uh, action plan. And it was 30,000 to the city for five years, 30,000 a year for five years to plant uh, trees to increase the tree canopy. And so uh, we're, we're working on locations. I did, you know, I working with Parks and Rec, we went out and we identified a number of them. As of this week, most of them don't seem to suffice, but uh, we're looking for places to, to put in some seedlings to get the tree canopy up there. The other thing you need to know uh, is that 30% of the uh, land mass in the city is owned by the city and 70% is in the hands of the public or uh, commercial uh, enterprises. And so if you're going to ever reach a 40% tree canopy, which was the original target that the city council endorsed, you really need to take into consideration the commercial industrial land and the land of the residents. So uh, working with Rochelle, we're hoping to have pilot projects for those two uh, constituents uh, later this spring. Next slide, please. There is one area I covet. Uh, I love to plant near water because I think it gives you the biggest bang for the buck. And this is a pond located right adjacent to the 403. Uh, it's on uh, the Brantford Power property. Brantford Power has moved out to Savannah Oaks Drive in the Northwest Industrial Park. It's uh, an interesting pond. Uh, I believe it's a tailings pond from when the area was mined. Uh, there are fish in it. There are uh, evidence of turtles in it. And the whole uh, south side of that pond is currently uh, mowed and it's in grass. And it's a wonderful opportunity to uh, have a major community project to naturalize this area. Next slide, please. And there's a shot uh, of the grass and the pond. And uh, I'm hoping to be able to uh, and the, have the community there next year. I'm hoping, we'll see. Thank you very much. Would anybody have any questions? In that case, I'm good to go. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, it's awesome to hear about all the uh, stuff that uh, is in the works and hopefully in better times we can uh, rally the troops and, and get uh, some people out there to help support these uh, these projects and, and uh, use our, our platform as SBAC to uh, to help you in any way possible. Get me the pond. <laughs> Hi, Carly.
Cheers. Hey Chuck, I know I just jumped in last minute, but I just wanted to say hello and I support I support you, Chuck. I will be there for Earth Day, and I, I really hope we can be there in person this year. Um, my fingers are crossed. It won't be for Earth Day, Carly. It might be in the fall. <laughs> oh, in the fall. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Whenever it will happen. Yeah. Cheers. Okay. Cheers. Bye. Um. All right, so uh, as our uh, panelists get added here from Atomic Spark, um, I'd like to propose that we waive section 15.6.3A of the procedural bylaw to allow the presentation to exceed the um, allotment of 10 minutes. Um, just the nature of the presentation and the um, kind of weight of what we're looking to do here, um, I think would, uh, would kind of, uh, demand a, a little extra time. Um, so, uh, does anybody have any objections to, uh, or wish to speak to that? Seeing none, um, leave that work. Does that work, Emma? Yes, it did. Okay. Um, so I will give the floor to, um, our presenters from, uh, Atomic Spark and say welcome. And just before you guys get going, can you just, uh, state your names for the public record, uh, before you take the floor? Sure. My name's Adam Hislop and, uh, I'm with Atomic Spark. Chris? Hi, I'm Chris Farias and I'm from the Unicorn Rebellion. And I'm Natasha Sostak, also with Unicorn Rebellion. Cool. Um, thanks for having us here tonight. Am I okay to jump into it? Is that uh, well, awesome? Uh, Thank you. Sorry, it's just just Emma, the clerk here. I do have a yep. slideshow, and I, and then I also have um, another uh, PDF from you. Which did you want me to show? The slideshow right now? I think we'll do the slideshow first, um, <clears throat> and then. Um, the PDF um, could be brought up maybe afterwards, um, and uh, and that. So, um, what um, what we want to want to do tonight, and and um, forgive me because I'm not sure what all's been seen or discussed at this point, but um, we've um, we've done some work. Um, my company, Atomic Spark, here in, in Brantford, has worked with Chris and, and Natasha to create uh, a concept um, for a uh, a video um, to uh, uh, get the community engaged in. Um, in this in the uh, um, uh, process and uh, what we're looking to do is uh, present that idea to you tonight and then also get your um, get any questions uh, feedback anything like that and then um, we have a, a proposal the pdf is a proposal for sort of um, a, the actual production part of the project so we would take the the script and this concept and actually produce something that could be used uh, online and hopefully draw draw in the community and get people engaged so um I uh, was hoping, Chris, maybe you and Natasha could uh, could talk through the concept first of all. Is that okay to go to that next? For sure. Thank you. Um, so I'm so excited to be working on this project and that I was I, I have been invited to be part of it. I moved to Brantford um, two years ago from Hamilton. Many of my clients are still in Hamilton, and it's just such an honor to get to work with um, the city, especially since I moved here and I've fallen in love with it. Surprisingly, for me, I'm just like, this is the best. Um, so to work, work on some, to, to, to get started, uh, when we started to think about how we could communicate about the city of Brantford's environment, environmental strategy, um, how it's going to tackle climate change, the plan for that, um, I really thought about like moving here and what was something that that drew me to the city and I live in a neighborhood right next to the river the river is absolutely stunning and it was a surprise to me uh, living here for three months and then walking down the street and going oh there's a beautiful big river here I didn't even know um, and then doing some research into that into that river and knowing that the river um, uh, in Brantford um, has a lot of history to it. It built the economy um, when Brantford first started, uh, you know, becoming an economic um, player. Um, it 
it runs through the city. It's a constant in everyone's life in Brantford. It's something that is steady, it's strong, it's consistent. Um, and we kind of wanted to take that idea of the river and tell the story of Brantford's history and Brantford's future when it comes to um, uh, the environmental, um, how, how the environment's going to play in that. Uh, we wanted to use the river as a way to tell that story. And so I'm just, I'm just kind of like starting with the, the idea and the concept here just to get your, your head um, uh, in the right place. And one of the ways we wanna do this is we wanna do it by a local Brantford artist, a fantastic artist, uh, creating a watercolor, uh, uh, using watercolor um, to depict Brantford and create a, a image um, that we can use um, not only in the video, but possibly on other things um, going forward with a campaign. So um, maybe on uh, bottles or tote bags and things like that. Something that people see in the video and then they can relate to when they're out in public. Um, so we're using an artist and watercolor to tell this story um, of Brantford. So maybe I'll hand it over to Natasha. Natasha, did I cover everything, do you think? I think you did. I think you did. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. So I'm going to hand it off to Natasha to, um, we kind of laid out the script for everyone. And then you're not going to see the artwork um, yet because it obviously hasn't been created um, by the artist, but I've put in some watercolor so you can kind of see how things will look, but it's not going to be exactly like this. So Natasha, take it away. Sure. So if we could go to the next slide, so I think right now on my screen, I just see the Unicorn Rebellion logo. If you go to the next slide. So just like Chris said, this was kind of our inspiration was the watercolor. So what I'm going to do is we've laid out the script kind of line by line on each slide. So in order to preserve the flow, flow river, to preserve the flow of the script and how it's intended to be read, um, as soon as I'm done reading the slide, you can just advance to the next one. So I'll get started. Want to see Brantford history in action? Look to the river. Once a place to hunt, to fish, and to harvest, a connector of all things, shipping goods here and there to bring prosperity to all. Today, it continues to flow through a city that's ever growing. Our history is rich and vibrant, but the long-term effects of climate change don't have to be a part of our story. A community without a plan to tackle these environmental challenges head on won't get very far, but that's not us. We have a plan, a roadmap to action. Here's where we're going, Brantford. Net carbon neutral by 2050, are you in? It's a big ask we know, and success won't come overnight. But if living here has taught us anything, it's that we never back away from a challenge. Because this isn't a dream or wishful thinking, it can be our reality. We're already known for our determination. Our most famous residents have done extraordinary things. Now it's our turn to leave our legacy one where citizens respect and protect the natural environment. One that inspires other cities to say, what they did in Brantford is amazing. How can we do that too? Everyone, everything, everywhere, existing in perfect harmony. That's the goal. In this city, reminders of our history are all around us. Here's our chance to write a meaningful part of it. So what do you say, Brantford? A cleaner, greener, more sustainable city. Let's make it happen. For updates on how the city is working to reduce the impact of climate change within our community and ways you can help, follow hashtag Brantford Climate Action on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. And that's our proposed script that we'd love to get your feedback on. <laughs> Thanks, Natasha. If I can, um, if I can jump in, uh, Chris. I, if you have something to say too, please, please, uh, please jump in here. But 
Um, I, so I think our idea would be to take that script. Um, we would film uh, Heather, the artist, actually painting um, a piece of artwork. Um, we would need to, to look at an, an environment to do that in. One that's come to my mind is uh, Glenhurst um, for obvious connection to, to art, but it's also a nice uh, facility to film in. We've filmed in it numerous times over the years. Um, and uh, we'd film Heather um, painting this piece of art and then you select shots from that combined with a professional voiceover uh, music and create, um, create a, a piece that can be used online um, and, um, and something that hopefully will uh, engage the community and give uh, something that's a little bit different, a little bit unique um, to, uh, um, to this uh, initiative. And also, um, like Chris was talking about, a, a piece of art that can be used uh, in other ways um, down the road or, you know, can be repurposed as well. So um, that's, um, that's kind of where we are. Um, any questions about the script or anything like that? Yes, Councillor. Councillor Natowski. Thank you, sorry, I've been doing my raised hand thing. Um, so a couple of, of comments, first of all, it's, it's, so hard without the music and the video pieces right and I know that it, that puts you guys in a bad spot to try and 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 make the pitch so thank you for this um the first thing that comes to mind for me and I'm not sure if others feel the same is this feels like it's talking to us who have a better understanding like even using the term carbon neutral um, I don't think most people know what that means. I, I, I mean, I've had people around the council table ask me what that means. I've had staff because it's a very familiar thing to us. But um, so there's just a, a, there's a few things in there that I think um, we just may want to tweak to really be talking to more to the general public and to get them in why should they be interested in it that so that's the first, that's what pops out to me. That's all for now. <laughs> yeah, um, wonderful. I, I really like what you guys were going through um, with the theme of the script. It's really engaging and I see the passion behind it. And that's also what's really drawn me to be part of this group as well too. Um, and I'm just thinking like, as I'm reading that and I wanna think of it as Brantford specifically, like what makes Brantford unique and what are we doing specifically to become carbon neutral? And I'm not sure if there's a way to kind of bring in what the green team's been doing and like really focusing on our, I guess like our mission in, in our one subcommittee is how can we educate um, the, the community on um, becoming carbon neutral? And that's where sometimes like Sherilyn Tonsky said is that term just kind of gets it. We, we know what it means, but the general public doesn't know what it means and what tangible actions can we make in Brantford in our community to reach that goal. And I think that would paint a, a clear picture for me, but I love what you guys are going with. And yes, I definitely, oh, sorry. If, if the music was there, if that was all there, easier, more absorbed, but you still caught my attention, which was great. So phenomenal job. I think that's a great suggestion. Um, if there are any of those little tidbits of like, here's what we're doing, here's what we want people to do. Um, you know, we can also pepper those things into uh, the script um, if we have them. So thank you for that. Yeah. And as you guys were um, presenting there, I just followed you guys on Instagram on the green team um, page, just if you wanted to have a look to see oh, perfect. To pop some ideas there. Perfect. Thank you. We would, um, if, if I can make a comment, if that's okay. Um, we would um, typically in the production process, um, if, you know, if everything's moving forward with, with this, the proposal that we've got for you tonight, um, there'd be some back and forth as we kind of, you know, tweak, tweak the script and make sure we have everything lined up. So that, that would be um, to, uh, to speak to your, your comment, um, Councillor Ntoski, that would be um, part, of, part of the process. It would be getting that, that input from, from people and, um, and uh, yeah, making sure that it lines up exactly with what you wanna say and that before we get to the, the filming stages. So um, it's certainly not something that's, you know, carved in stone at this point, there can be some, uh, some, some adjustment. Although I think Natasha did a great job on it. So. <laughs> Any other comments or questions or? Councilor Nazowski. 
thank you. I'm going to put Rochelle on the spot and just ask Rochelle from her perspective and, and her work with the Climate Action Plan, um, what your thoughts are in terms of how this will help augment your work, please. Sure, definitely. Yeah, I really like the presentation and the, the voiceover was really nice and I think it was really inspiring. Um, I think it would be a good tool for letting the community know that we are taking action because that's what I've heard a lot recently is that I don't know that the city's doing anything. I don't know how to get involved. I don't know if, you know, if there's anything that I can do. So even just as an awareness raising uh, video and piece, I think that it would be really valuable. Um, and yeah, once you get the music and the video in there, I think it would be a really nice thing to be able to share around with the community. Um, and as for some of the specific actions, I think uh, we could go into that a little bit, although um, the timing, I don't, the community climate change plan isn't done yet. <laughs> so um, we just have to, you know, make sure that those two pieces sort of align and that we don't end up putting specific actions in there that may end up changing mm. uh, later down the line, because it would be nice for this to, to have some longevity. So a couple of thoughts there, but you know, I think it's a really nice piece and would be really valuable for me to sort of spread that climate action messaging around the community um, and, and let let the community know that that we're we're working on it and and yeah you can follow us or go to the website to to learn more Th thanks Rochelle and if I may Mr. Chair just to follow up to that thank you um I, I think you raise a good point I mean <clears throat> I, I understand wanting the specifics but I think there's a certain risk with whatever specifics we pick or choose to put in there because we're trying to send an overall message so I think that there's there might be some struggle with that balance but but interested i'd be interested to see how you guys you guys are the professionals see if you can work that out but i understand where that could be it could be risky and, and we may lose the overall message may i respond to that okay yeah i think i think initially we were trying to keep it a little bit more um broad and not not speak to specific initiatives for that exact reason that because because the action plan wasn't developed, this was to get people involved in, in the planning and, and bring the awareness up in the community. Um, that doesn't mean that we couldn't incorporate some more specific if we wanna take it you know, a little bit further than, than it is, we could, we could look at doing that. Um, and it doesn't mean too that, that some of this couldn't be repurposed down, down the road and um, we create, we've done this for various city projects and that over the years where we've created video content and then um, updated it and re repurposed it. So we use elements from it down the road uh, just to support that. So there could be, you know, kind of a longer shelf life with it. Um, I guess it just really, you know, it, it takes a little bit of back and forth to get the script kind of exactly the way we want and, and that sort of thing. But, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a good point. Should we take a look at the proposal? I'm sorry, I don't, I don't mean to jump in or if I shouldn't be, but yep, is that no, okay to take, take a look at that real quick? <laughs> the next, next step, if we could. Uh, I know there's rules to follow meetings and I don't want to. <laughs> Adam, do you, turn, do, you, do you want me and Natasha to step out for this? Um, are you okay to sit in just for a couple minutes just in case there's any questions? Yeah, I am. Uh, Natasha, you don't have to stay, but I can definitely stay. No, it's okay. I'll, I'll stay on just in case. Okay. Okay, if, if, that's, uh, if that's okay. Um, so I just wanted to, to take a moment and we can kind of skim through this, this document. Um, I won't read it word for word. Um, it outlines um, sort of what, um, what we would be doing next on this project. Um, so uh, this is uh, would be based on this concept that we have developed. Um, and uh, we would be looking to do some filming. Um, this is with um, our video crew um, with, um, Unicorn Rebellion with uh, with Chris and then with uh, Heather the artist. Um, um, we would look at uh, filming at some point in the, you know to be determined date. Um, if we could scroll down a little bit there um, on the PDF. Um, sorry, this isn't formatted for uh, for a screen uh, here like um, for presentation. Uh, so it outlines uh, sort of the scope of work, the deliverables, um, pricing for the video package. Um, and that's everything included. And then if you scroll down even, even further, I think on the next pages are just terms and conditions, um, which are, are fairly standard. But if anyone has any questions about those or about uh, anything that's, um, that's included, uh, I'm happy to answer those. Uh, 
Sorry. Yeah. Yes. Rochelle. Rochelle. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. I just wanted to provide a little bit of context for uh, the committee, just just to remind everybody where we are in the process. Um, what happened in the in 2020? We did approve the first part of this uh, process, which was to come up with this idea um, and the the strategy around the video. So um, that was paid out of the 2020 budget, and so the the amount uh, discussed today and presented in that proposal that we just looked at uh, will be the 2021 budget. So um, just yeah, I just wanted to provide that for you guys. Half of the the work has been done and paid for. And so there's just the second half, which is the video production to, to happen this year. Thank you. Yes, uh, David. Um, yeah, in, in, in light of that comment, um, is the video meant to tie in with the community um, uh, climate change action plan or the or both um, the one that's approved or the future one? I'm just wondering um, if some of the approved items already could be highlighted in the in the video, um, you know, addressing your earlier concern um, and then highlighting there's more to come in the community report. Just a just a thought. Yeah, can I can I speak to that? Um, so yeah, we're sort of right in the middle of both. So the corporate plan was approved, and there are actions within that that the city as a corporation is taking. Um, and then right now we're in that public engagement process for the community plan. So um, this video and this outreach could work really well to sort of engage the community to get them involved in the planning of the plan. Um, and then also once it's done to sort of promote that it exists and that you can go read it and learn how to, how to take action. Um, so yeah, we could pull, and then there's general, general themes from the community plan that are clear that we need to, you know, we need to work on reducing emissions from cars. We need to work on reducing emissions from buildings. And so we could go with some high level goals like that, that will definitely be included regardless of the details. Um, so that's something we could, we could look at. There we go. Um, so uh, do we have any other questions, comments? Councillor Antosky? Sorry, it occurred to me, actually, I like, I, I kind of like that this has come to us this way, because I'm sitting here thinking, you know, I'm imagining music in the back of my head. And I, but it occurred to me that we could all be sitting here listening to this and hearing different music in our head, or envisioning a different video. So I, I, I guess I'm kind of curious as to if if uh, Adam and team, Chris and Natasha, if you've given any thought to like, is this slow, peaceful music? Is this action oriented music? And then also from from the committee, what what feeling are you envisioning from from this? Um, we don't uh, we don't have music picked out at this um stage usually that would be something that would come a little further along in the process um and you're right music is very subjective <laughs> and uh when um decisions are being made in a larger group like this it can be something that there's a bit of back and forth to uh to arrive at, at something um chris i don't do you have anything in mind we haven't really discussed specifics of music I well, know, um, projects. We've gone back and forth a bit trying to find something that works. So, <laughs> and I'm not I'm not asking about a specific yeah. music, but the the type yeah. of like what the feeling yeah. is. Yeah, yeah. That uh, what I've had in my head the whole time is as um, uh, as something that is inspirational that kind of like lifts you up and kind of excites you a little bit. Like, um, it's hard to explain, but I don't see it being really soft and fluffy or really fun. Um, and, and, you know, kid like, I think it's something that is modern and uplift, uplifting and kind of pushes your soul to want to do something. <laughs> That's how I create it. That's also subjective. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I think that there's like this, this, this sound that just makes you want to just like, okay, I, I, I need to at least watch more get involved more see something else um in terms of the video style i really want it to be bright um i don't know if i've never been to the the place that um 
Adam spoke Blender. of, but like natural light, uh, you know, sun coming in, uh, very light wood, uh, sitting down and, and um, Heather, um, Heather um, in like really crisp, clean, um, white, like something really stark and I don't know, um, again, inspirational and beautiful and just something that makes you go, okay, the future looks better. I know this is, it, it's very hard to explain. It's all in my yeah. head. If I could just put you into my head. <laughs> well, that's, that's what I think we're all dealing with, with what's yeah. in our head. So we, we will, I'd, I'd be interested to see if committee has any comments on that, but, but we will trust the professionals. <laughs> And, and we just, if I can just comment to that, sorry, I don't mean to cut anyone off, but um, we would be, um, as, as you know, if things are moving forward, we'd be coming back with sort of a more um, concrete plan and some specific direction around here's where we're thinking of filming and, and some, some more details. Um, so it wouldn't be the kind of thing where um, we just go away and then come back and say, here's your finished video. There, there would be that opportunity for, uh, for some input and all that. It's, it's not, a, um, not something where we, um, don't don't want your input. So, <laughs> any awesome. other thank, questions? Thank you. <laughs> so, seeing no other hands or questions or comments, um, is there something you need from us to take away, um, kind of immediately, or um, is this something that uh, we can deliberate a bit with and get back to you, kind of in the super near future yeah um my my i assume you're asking asking me that uh jonathan um yeah my my uh what would be great is if yeah once you've had a chance to um to discuss uh and and that if you can can let us know if you if you're wanting to move forward with it and then uh we can uh we can get going if, if that's the case so um but yeah no we don't need anything else uh this evening just wanted to provide an opportunity uh to answer any questions and um present the idea and if anything else comes up you know please uh, please let us know awesome well thank you for uh what you've put together for us so far and uh coming out tonight and coming out last month as well it, uh, it's a bit of a bumpy road but we got here and uh <laughs> we're uh, super glad to be able to see and and uh excited to to uh hopefully uh, take this into the next step and, uh, and continue on this project. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, we'd love to work with you on it if, uh, if there's a, a fit there. Um, but uh, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Thanks for taking time to hear thank us tonight. Thank you. And uh, we'll talk to you all again soon. <laughs> Thanks. Have a good night now. <laughs> Bye. 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 All right, so um, before we move on, is there um, kind of any, uh, I guess we could, Emma, this would be the spot to discuss it or do we need to move anything around procedurally to discuss it here? Um, so this would be the spot to discuss it. I will turn to Rochelle uh, a little bit to find out what kind of recommendations she would like. I, I just want uh, to make sure that we have the budget approved or or sorry, I know that we approved some, but I want to make sure that we have that also in the recommendation. And then we can make a re recommendation to move forward with the proposal and that staff be directed to um, work with Atomic Spark to finish the video or anything that the committee uh, recommends at that point. Okay, thanks. So yeah, we're kind of in between finishing up the presentation and, and kind of dipping our toe into our, our budget item on our agenda. But uh, Rochelle, I guess I'll turn it over to you to kind of uh, respond to what Emma was looking for there before we discuss any further. Yeah, thank you. I, I, yeah, just reiterating exactly that. We, we uh, do need to make a decision on whether you want to approve stage two of this video. And so the, the cost item there is outlined in the budget. Um, so it's uh, $4,750 $4, to finish off the video. Um, and so I think we need a decision um, tonight whether the committee would like to go ahead or, or not. So sorry, Jonathan, I guess here then if we would like to get a recommendation, um, if you are wishing to approve it, we can um, do a recommendation to approve it and move forward with the video proposal here. And then we can approve the budget once we get down into the budget work plan. 
Okay, so um, I guess we'll just kind of open up the floor quickly if anyone wants to speak to that. Um, I'll kind of start in that, um, in my opinion, uh, like I don't really think I've seen anything that would say, what have we gotten ourselves into? I mean, we, we've started on this path. Um, the, it's pretty impressive what they've put together in terms of, of uh, the ability to present kind of in this means and everything else and and in terms of, of the messaging that we're looking to get across and I do think this would be a really um, useful tool for kind of our mandate and and, and what we've been doing to uh, assist with the the um, community outreach and everything else like that um, so yeah is there anyone else that wants to kind of speak to it uh, before we um, Councilor Antoski. Thanks, Jonathan. Um, I'll say this in case others are thinking it. So at, as a non, an uncreative, a non-creative person, I, I struggle with this. I, I Don't get me wrong. I like what they've done, but I'm the person who needs to see the full thing, right? So I come back to what we started with looking at the Chipotle and that had, and, and I look at how simple that was. And so that reminds me why this needs to be so simple. I look at what we have today and I go, oh my gosh, that's like a lot of money, but I know where it's going to go. And I know the work that these guys do and they've done a lot of work for the city. They've done a lot of projects uh, outside of the city. They are very creative. So as an uncreative person and seeing something that I can't visualize the end thing, I'm putting my trust in them. And I feel very comfortable with that because I have seen the work that that they've done. Um, and they're easy to work with. If, if we do get to a, a bump in the road, they, they will work with us. If, and we just all have to be really um, okay with speaking about something that either we don't like or we, you know, this, this is a I guess it's a professional thing. It's not about hurting feelings and things. So um, I, they do good work. I think it's worth the price. I think that it will really um, augment the work that Rochelle is doing and help us get the community excited and even just aware of it so that when we're able to do stuff again, um, we've got people on our side. Um, so so I, I will just say that. Nem, I don't know if you, for the recommendation, do you need to, a mover to, do we need to move and second and all that kind of stuff for this? Yes, we do. Okay, I will move that we that we uh, proceed into phase two of the project. Okay. Um, do you have any uh, other comments, questions, concerns about it before we call for a seconder to the uh, recommendation moved by Councilor Antoski, Carly? I agree as well too. And their energy was just so phenomenal. Like I got smiling, like they got me excited. I haven't seen any work they produced. They're new to me. So this is exciting. Um, but if they've done a lot of work with the city and they've produced things that have been great, I, I can see it just by their attitude and I like, they're just, their energy is just great. So I, I trust their work. Thanks Carly. Yeah, so I think the only other thing that, um, and they were they were pretty, um, it, it seemed adaptable, is just making sure that um, when we're reviewing, if we do go forward, um, that we're very careful, like Councillor Antoski brought up, to make sure that we're putting ourselves in the shoes of uh, the community and kind of trying to look through a lens that isn't our own bias of just understanding terms that um, we throw around um, in, in, in our meetings that uh, we all have a base understanding and, and background in um, and, and really make sure that we're looking at us at this from a lens of um, the public in terms of making sure that um, we're, we're actually creating messaging for our target audience and not creating messaging for us. Um, and uh, cause we're, we're already in the room um, and kind of, and of pushing this. So, um, yeah, outside of that, uh, I guess we have a recommendation moved by Councillor Antoski looking for a seconder. Seconded by Carly. Um, 
And yeah, so we can carry that. Sorry, Jonathan, you just have to call the question. Oh, all those, sorry. It's been a while. That's okay. <laughs> um, all those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, as everyone was in favor. Uh, so carried the recommendation. Um, so that'll kind of naturally carry us into our um, next item, which is 4.1, um, our 2021 work plan and budget. Um, and I believe we put together kind of a little bit of a graphic. Um, so thank you to uh, Rochelle and Emma for sorting that out. Uh, Emma, if we could pull that quickly up on the screen there. Um, so every year um, and this year, um, just kind of for our, our new members and a refresher for our old members as well, um, we uh, establish kind of within the framework of our, our mandate, we establish a work plan and kind of an idea of uh, allotment of our time and, and what uh, is going to take uh, most of our energy looking at the year uh, ahead. And, and so as you'll see on the screen, um, there's, uh, there's five kind of, I guess, subcategories that we break it down into. Um, and this is uh, based on kind of where we're at and, and projects that we've been looking at over um, the last couple of years. So um, you'll see climate action, which we've spent a fair amount of time on. Um, and then um, Canada Day and Clean Brantford. Um, and so that um, someone gets shopped out as a subcommittee, um, which we've labeled as the green team. Um, and, and the Clean Brantford project kind of rolls into um, waste reduction and, and our uh, our goal for zero waste events. Um, and obviously Canada Day has been our flagship over the last, uh, I guess, technically three years, although we didn't quite get there last year. Um, uh, one of the other things that we undertake every year is the Green ER Awards. Um, and, uh, and so we kind of facilitate that. Uh, um, we collect the applications um, and their subcategories for um, individuals and, and uh, uh, businesses as well. Um, and we typically try to line that up with um, Earth Day. Um, and we kind of need to overview that and see kind of where we're at for, because I don't believe we landed up um, tackling that last year. Um, and with our meetings kind of being um, subject to need, um, that might be something that uh, would be tough to undertake, but um, I'm sure it would be up for the challenge if, if we show cho so choose. Um, stormwater funding research took up a lot of energy, uh, I guess, in the 2019 calendar year. We listened to a lot of presentations from uh, other municipalities that um, have instituted a, um, I guess, a stormwater management fee um, and kind of looked at uh, building a recommendation and, and seeing um, how its application in Brantford, how we would like to see it applied in Brantford if uh, so choose to be undertaken. And then the final category there is current issues and consultation. Um, so that's just kind of an open area for anything kind of one-off or um, that pops up that uh, we can't really foresee at this time. Um, so uh, right now it seems pretty evenly split into kind of a 20% um, pie, um, but that uh, even if we were to adjust that, it's pretty hard to narrow down. Um, uh, and like I said, especially with our meetings being subject to um, immediate uh, kind of need, um, or I guess emergency need is the, the title on it. Um, yeah, any, anybody wanna jump in on that as a background? I just kind of got rambling there, but uh, no, okay. Oh, Councillor Antoski. 
<laughs> Sorry. Um, so through you to Emma, Emma, and, and, and I don't know if you know the answer to this tonight or if you have to check with the clerk team, but would the green ER wards be um, considered emergency for us to meet on? As it stands right now, no. Uh, we have other awards that we are unable to do as well. Um, so it's not considered an urgent item or um, legislatively mandated. That's kind of what we go on, something that's holding staff from doing their job or something that's legislated um, that we must do. So as it stands, no, we wouldn't be doing the Green ER Awards. Okay, so that changes the graph. And what, wh where do we need to be when those things open up? Is, it, is, is that in the color coding of the province or what, what has to change for us to, to um, start getting back to normal? So that, I'm not exactly sure on that. I, we, don't, we don't follow the color coding, I, I know right now. We, it depends on um, council approval. And right now council has approved that uh, we stay kind of status quo for right now. So I do believe there is a report coming uh, in the near future. So that might touch on that, but I can definitely bring that up to the clerk's team and um, see, kind of get an idea of when we're gonna be able to start doing those things again. Okay, thanks, Emma. And my, my comment about Canada Day is, is, is similar to that. I know that I think February 26th is a, is a pivotal, pivotal date in terms of whether we decide we're going to move forward with, it, it's set to lift on February 26th or February 20 something, um, the kind of the moratorium on any events. Um, so whether that gets extended or not at the end of February, am I right on that, Emma? Do you know? You might not know. Uh, I do not know off the top of my head, okay. but I can research yeah. that while we speak. I think it's, yeah, I think it's the end of, of February where we're set. Uh, we had put the date out that we can't have any events. Um, so we'll, we'll get closer to that date and we're either going to extend it or we're not. So we have to decide as a committee, as, as of up till what date are we still capable of dealing with Canada Day and after what date can we just not, you know, prepare and have the capacity. So that will also change the gra graph. And um, the stormwater funding research, we have not heard much about from staff. So um, I will circle back and see where we are with that. We've had a, a staff change that was, that was leading that up. So I will look into that. So that leads me to believe that if we were to make the changes today, um, most of our activity is going to be around the current issues and climate action, both of which tend to be uh, very large. Um, but that those are kind of my thoughts and comments around that. And unfortunately, we're like everybody else, we're in this, this fluid, um, this fluid space, I guess. Councillor Ntoski, you are correct. The February 26th date is, yeah. <laughs> Um, we've definitely held off on all events until after that date, and then it opens up a little bit. But as you mentioned, we don't know what's going to happen in the spring. Um, yeah, so I'll, I will talk to the clerk's team and report back with an answer on awards and uh, ceremonies and stuff. Thanks, Emma. No problem. Yeah, and, and for awards, um, just because we've always done it to tie in with um, uh, Earth Day doesn't mean that we can't revisit in the fall if, if things progress and things are happening again. Um, I also think it would be something a little tough to kind of, uh, as not much has been going on, I think it'd, it'd be rather tough to find applicants in terms of, of projects and things that have gone on within the last year. Um, I think we've had a lot of benefits of less usage of things and, and, and reduction in a lot of ways, um, just in a, as a natural side effect of what's been going on. But um, yeah, so that would also affect that. Um, Carly is kind of our resident green team expert. Did you want to speak at all to kind of a timeline you think we would, we would need to have in terms of being able to put Canada Day on? I know the first year we did it, you guys had like all of, two and a half weeks to, to get things together, but I don't think anybody wants to sign up for that kind of a timeline again. So what do you um, mean? I thought we all want to sign up for that, Jonathan. <laughs> so um, is there kind of anything in, in your mind in terms of a, 
um, an overarching. I mean, we're not as much as we would we would need to adapt and, and kind of review and, and have a call for volunteers. Um, we do have a little bit of our own framework laid out from years past um, and a lot of the kind of, um, you know, groundwork, like we're not, you know, the wheel's been roughly formed. It's, it's, uh, there is a bit of framework there, but um, yeah. So I'll just kind of. Yeah. Um, so I think with, um, in terms with the green team for Canada day, like you said, I think to us now it's old hat based on the routine of having our waste monitors and as well as having the audit, we've got that good. However, and we also still have a solid green team. Um, we've been connecting, I guess, slacking a little bit lately as we haven't had anything to work on, but I still know we have a dedicated group of volunteers that we've built over the last two years. I know the first year, I think we, there were six Cheryl or seven for the first year or so. And um, now I think we've built the team. I think we'll have at least 15 dedicated volunteers right up to the day before. However, we also need to plan things with the vendors. So I think keeping in touch with Parks and Rec and seeing where they are with Canada Day. I know, I guess in terms, they've got bigger fish to fry for Canada Day that they'll be planning or need more planning ahead for them than we will need for what our... Um, just a baseline plan for uh, the green team. And um, yeah, I know last year we planned to do a little bit more above and beyond, but I think if we can just get out there and have our way stations and do what we did last the previously year in 2019, um, I don't, I guess I don't really have a date, I guess just keeping tabs with parks and parks and rec and their plan for Canada day Um and, and go from there. I, I'm sure no decisions will really be made by April or so, because I know we're still in this, this type of lockdown phase, but um, I guess that we'll play it by ear. I don't know. I was just, I was kind of thinking that too, after I turned over the, the mic to you is that uh, we don't necessarily, like I know a lot of our planning and leading up to the, um, or planning that we had done between the um, 2019 event and the 2020 event, a lot of it was reflection and working with um, Bush Systems to kind of get our partnership with them um, kind of fulfilled in terms of what they were providing for us. Um, but in terms of, you know, looking at any potential for a 2021 event, we wouldn't necessarily need to um, kind of, I don't, this is going to sound bad to say, but like we wouldn't necessarily be looking for improvements or looking to, to kind of grow. We'd be looking to provide our, our service and, and, and um, kind of uh, maintain status quo, like you said, of what we've accomplished so far and, and kind of bridge that gap going into another year. I would kind of think just for sake of putting an actual hard date on it, that we would need at least two months to uh, map out our plan and, and really facilitate uh Kind of our call to action and 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 uh recruitment of, of volunteers and making sure that uh you know we have um uh kind of leads for the different parts of of the event because there's um you know the prep the execution and the audit um which all takes um time and kind of is a lot for uh, as you would know any one person to undertake so um yeah did you want to speak to that again, Carly? Yeah, I guess going into that too, having those garbage cans, those bins in, and I'm not sure how it in advance can plan to have all those there. So seeing the how far in advance he plans for these things for us, we just kind of, it was there, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, so yeah, I think uh, decisions should be made or what decisions are made in April that we could bring to a green team meeting in May to say, yes, we're having Canada day or no, we're not having Canada day would be a good, good baseline. Like you said, having that two months to prepare. Yeah. And another point that I kind of see there is, is if, um, if we say like we need to know by May 1st, our May meeting would be too late because it would be, um, at the end towards the end of the month so we would kind of need to know by our april yeah. meeting date whether or not an event is going to be happening before we um commit one way or the other um yeah i agree uh emma um, 
through the chair to committee. I did uh, touch base with Brian Hughes about the Canada Day celebration before our meeting. And I just wanna let you know what his answer was. Um, he said, as of today, plans are to move forward with the event. To what degree we will be able to deliver is still an unknown. There is a chance it could be a virtual celebration if restrictions are still in place with regards to people gathering in public spaces. Uh, we will likely be determining a date by which we need to make a decision by, and he will keep us in the loop. Um, so when we find out if it's going to move forward and uh, at least what date they need to decide that by, uh, we can kind of plan uh, to go with that. And I will keep keep you guys all in the loop as well. Awesome. Thanks, Emma. No problem. So I would kind of suggest that uh, in terms of the, the work plan, um, to kind of move things along. Um, I guess we're kind of leaving it as is and just real allocating percentages, but there is no real percentages on that. Like this was kind of just put together for a visual visualization of, of our, um, our, our kind of subcategories of, of our, our mandate. Um, and we're kind of at the mercy of the, um, current landscape and that uh, our meetings are, are, we get the A or nay from, uh, from clerks and, and from uh, any business that would be before us. So um, if uh, there's no objections, I think uh, kind of just leaving the work plan the way it's been laid out um, might be the best way to go. And then we can kind of adapt to that. Um, it is something that is kind of fluid. It's not like we're held to, you know, breaking our meetings down by, you know, categories based on percentages of, of categories. So um, do we need to um, have a, uh, a mover and a seconder to adopt the work plan, Emma? Uh, so the way I had it in the agenda was that the 2021 work plan slash budget be approved. So um, maybe we want to take a look at the budget first and then we can move a motion after that. Okay. So can we pull up the next slide then, please? And so this is where we kind of uh, are going to have to get into deciding whether or not we're moving forward here. Um, based on all that's before us um, and then just kind of going back to the work plan um, of those items. None of them cost um, money in the sense that um, um, they're all kind of theoretical, I guess, or, or, or um, procedural. Um, there's not too much that's tangible in that work plan outside of, of Canada today. Um, so um, that's where we've, we've, I guess, it's, it's new ground for SPAC, uh, especially um, like we really only had a, a budget towards the end of last year based on the amount of meetings that we had and and uh and so this is really only our second year with a budget now last year um i guess in the or in 2019 um we kind of got our own budget through canada day in a sense and sponsorships um but that wasn't kind of in this sense um and so kind of in my opinion, looking at what we have going for the year and kind of the unknown, um, really climate action and, um, and Canada Day would be the places that uh, might require spending. Um, and in terms of kind of the discussion we've already just had on Canada Day and keeping the status quo, um, we've made kind of the biggest investment through sponsorship and through um, I guess partnership and sponsorship in terms of uh, we partnered with Bush Systems and they helped us with the cost of the bins, but we own the bins now. Um, and so it would be very limited in terms of we would really just need to make sure that we had bags and, and, and um, any PPE that we would need um, for um, for the event, which I, I believe we would potentially still have some overflow of. Carly, you're looking to. Speak Didn't to we get the bags? Was that was that part of uh, Parks and Rec's funding, or was that the green team? I think that was part of the general Canada Day 
money. Okay. Councilor Antosky? Yes, yes, things like that. Um, we, we do get some help from the city and uh, we also had Stone Straw as a sponsor for the event that, that went towards our things. So, so there are other avenues um, for the minimal amount of things that we need for Canada Day. And if I may, Mr. Chair, just kind of topping up what you were saying, um, last year was our first year with a dedicated budget from council and we had 2020 and couldn't do anything and we were running into the end of the year and we needed to find a way to, to utilize the money in a useful and efficient way, which is how we came up with this project because uh, the, the, the unfortunate part about city budgets is if you don't use it, you lose it. And uh, so that's how this, got, this project got bridged over um, kind of over two years and they, they split it evenly, even though if you were to break it all down, probably what they've done right now wasn't, you know, $5,000. It's good. It's the video, <clears throat> the video production. And uh, the, the second piece is coming that that's heavier on the weight, but they split it up for us so that it could fit into both the uh, budget years. Okay. Do we have any other questions, comments, concerns about uh, the budget and the work plan? So uh, just so everyone's kind of on the same page, if we were to approve this work plan and budget, this would also um, support the recommendation that we uh, moved and made um, after the presentation um, that we would go forward with the second half of the Atomic Spark uh, video production. Um, and so that's kind of what we're, we're moving and adopting here. Um, so seeing no comments, I guess uh, this would be the spot um, to ask for a mover and a seconder that the uh, 2021 work plan and budget be approved. Mark Steinecker, I'll move that. Thanks, Mark. A seconder. Sujata, I did see your hand go up, right? Okay, perfect. Thank you. So. Uh, and then call the question. All those in favor? In favor. All righty. So that I believe takes care of that. And uh, one more um, item under um, our items for consideration tonight. Um, is the natural gas electricity generation and Ontario energy decisions, Ontario climate caucus hub. Wow. That's a mouthful. Um, and kind of at this point, um, uh, I guess Councillor Antosky, before we, uh, actually put a motion or anything, can you just kind of speak to what this is and, and fill everybody in on what we're, we're, uh, we're after here? Sure, sure. And I don't, I don't know if anybody's had a chance to look at um, the outline. There's a, a number of communities that have moved this. Um, this is something that we've also seen at the Climate Caucus, and I thought it was important to bring to SPAC. Um, if, if you don't know, um, the current provincial government has um, decided to, to reinvest or further invest in um, gas-fired power plants. And if, if Sorry, my research is a few weeks old, but I think they, they, they plan on buying three or four more plants, um, all in the face of all of us trying to um, meet uh, carbon neutral uh, targets by some 2030, some 2050. Um, David, you may be familiar with this because Kingston um, was one of the, as, as usual, Kingston was one of the first on board with this. Um, and so what this is doing, this is calling on the provincial government to basically stop it, <laughs> cut it out, um, pay more attention to um, green investment, particularly when we're in a safe restart uh, mode. This is not the time to be reverting to old technologies. It's the time to uh, be investing in, um, in green energy and to be investing up front for the long haul. Um, and that, you know, as, as someone said, you know, if you're a, a welder or a driller in, in working in the gas fired industry or in a coal, in the coal industry, you can also be a welder or a, a fitter or in, in green energy. So, you know, you just, 
we still need those skills. We just need training in a, in a new industry. And um, anybody who thinks that these large corporations are not ready to pivot when they are told to pivot is is uh, fooling themselves. They can all do it. They're willing to do it. They're ready to do it, but they're going to ride it out as far as they can because they can. So <clears throat> I've got a resolution here that the, you'll see the one article in there that had kind of samples of what the different municipalities um, had put together. We put one together to match Brantford's and what we're looking for is for the green team to endorse this and move it forward to council for adoption um, to right. send to the province. The, for SPAC to, to endorse? Sorry. Yes. Yes, okay. So you, you just, you said green team, which is- Oh, sorry, thank you. Thank you for the- Splitting hairs, but- <laughs> No, that's important, thank you. Right, so Emma's going to tell me I have to read that, I bet. Well, that's what I was waiting for. <laughs> <laughs> I saw, okay, sorry guys, you got to listen to me read it. <laughs> okay, Ontario gas fired electricity generation. Whereas the government of Ontario is planning to increase reliance on gas fired elect electricity generation from Ontario's gas fired power plants, which is anticipated to increase greenhouse gas pollution by more than 300% by 2025 and by more than 400% by 2040, reversing more than a third of the greenhouse gas uh, pollution reductions achieved by phasing out our coal fired uh, power plants. And whereas greenhouse gas pollution is causing temperatures in Canada to rise at more than double the rate of the rest of the world, causing impacts to municipal operations and affecting residents of the city of Brantford. And whereas the city of Brantford declared a climate emergency and imperative climate action in 2019 and approved a corporate climate change action plan in 2020, committing to reaching net zero carbon emissions by 2050. And whereas a major component of the city's climate action, sorry, climate change action plan is to shift the energy consumption away from fossil fuel, fuels and onto low carbon Ontario electricity. If electricity produces more greenhouse gas emissions than anticipated, the city will have to compensate through other more costly measure, measures to reach its goals. And whereas there are fees, there are feasible cost-effective alternatives to increasing gas-fired electricity generation without increasing greenhouse gas pollution at costs well below the current price for Ontario's nuclear energy, including energy efficiency investments, renewable energy, and the purchase of low-cost hydroelectric power offered by the province of Quebec, eliminating the need to use gas-fired power plants for this purpose. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Corporation of the City of Brantford requests the Government of Ontario to place an interim cap of 2.5 megatons green, greenhouse gas pollution and develop and implement a plan to phase out all gas-fired electricity generation by 2030 to ensure that Ontario meets its climate target and that a copy of this resolution be sent to the Premier of Ontario, Brantford Brant, MPP Will Boma, the Association of Municipalities of Ontario and the County of Brant. So the general thought is here, we have alternatives. We've got the province of Quebec that we could be buying uh, this energy from and really what the heck, why are we going backwards? That's, <laughs> that's really the, the, the gist of this. Yeah, uh, seeing a lot of nodding faces and uh, no hands. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's uh, anything here that uh, SPAC would be opposed to. Um, and so we would um, basically, there's been a few times over the last couple of years, just kind of in my experience, more for um, David and Alicia. Um, that, uh, um, sorry, um, that uh, we have these things kind of brought to us and, and we give our feedback and then um, we kind of put our stamp on it um, before it goes to, to council just to say that uh, kind of we're behind it and, and we think it's a good idea and something that uh, council should, uh, should do. So 
Um, Sorry, Mr. Chair, I would also suggest uh, considering a delegation when this does come forward from SPAC. Okay, so we would also um, need to um, get together just to kind of speak to um, what's in the, the motion to to kind of reinforce that uh, we're, we're behind this. Um, and so at, uh, at this time, uh, we would, uh, basically what we're looking for is uh, a mover and a seconder to say that SPAC strongly endorses uh, the motion um, that Councillor Antoski has, uh, has intended to bring to council. Do we have a mover? Moved by Carly, seconded by Sujata. All those in favor? Well, before the vote, Mr. Oh, Chair, may I ask sorry. a question? Sorry, yeah. I just, I, I, I'm wondering if the kitty, uh, if the committee, um, so there are a couple of people from Clean Air Partnership that are willing to also um, speak on behalf of this resolution. So I'm wondering if the committee wishes for me to reach out to them to see if they will also delegate uh, the night of this. Sorry. So, would you want that as part of our our um, kind of? Uh, I guess I'm just asking for direction. If if you guys would like me to reach out to them and have them also speak to it, or if 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 you just want it to be SPAC. I I think it, the the more people that speak to it, probably the the stronger the um, the message. Um, anybody else? Okay. Looks good. Okay. Thank you. So, sorry. Uh, it was moved by Carly. Hi, buddy. Second. Hi, buddy. Seconded by um, Sujata. Um, and uh, so I guess we'll call the vote. All those in favor? In favor. Thank you. And, and unanimous to so no opposed. Um, so that wrap, wraps up our items for consideration. We have a couple of consent items um, that we can uh, go over. So um, item 5.1 is a 2021 meeting schedule, um, but- Okay, you go color. Is a 2021 meeting schedule. Um, uh, but I will read the note here that all task forces and committees are currently operating on an urgent as needed basis. Um, so the above dates are subject to cancellation due to the COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency in the province of Ontario. Um, so everyone can see the list of dates. Um, I believe that applies to the fourth Thursday of every month, which is kind of our regular um, schedule year to year. Um, is there any questions, comments, concerns on that? Okay, so seeing none, can we uh, have a mover and a seconder for that to accept our 2021 meeting schedule? I'll move that. Moved by Mark, seconded by Sujata. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Unanimous and carried. Um, we have uh, multiple minutes to accept as well. Um, did anybody notice if there were any errors or omissions from the November 26, 2020 meeting minutes? Seeing none, uh, can I get a mover and a seconder to adopt those minutes? Moved by Councillor Antoski, seconded by Carly. All those in favor? Approved. Unanimous and carried. Um, and then the, <laughs> if we can call the minutes from January, um, we uh, did open a meeting and then shortly therefore closed the meeting. Um, so there really can't be errors, but uh, yeah, can we just have a, a move -inter, move, move -inter, mover and a seconder for, for those as well? Uh, moved by David, seconded by Councillor Antoski. All those in favor? Aye. 
unanimous and carried. We have no resolutions and no notices of motion. Um, sorry, Councillor Antoski would like to speak quickly here. Yeah, my apologies. Just quickly, Emma, when you have a chance, can you please send out the timeline for this resolution? Because I suspect it's going to go as a notice of motion first. And if we can know uh, which committee it will hit which night, I would appreciate that. Yes, I will definitely let you know. Um, this will actually go through as a task force report to the Committee of the Whole Operations and Administration Committee. So um, I believe that is March, uh, let me just look at the schedule here, March 9th, or it could be March 2nd. Um, and I'll see if we can get it on that one. And I will let you know tomorrow. For the notice? or can the notice uh, So it won't be a notice. It'll be a task force report. Sorry, yeah. Yeah, no problem. So that will be on that agenda. And it uh, so that's when we'll need the delegates to appear. Um, so I will let you know tomorrow if we can get it on that agenda. If not, it will be the April um, Cow OA agenda. Thank you. No problem. All right. Um, so our, I guess there's not really a next meeting date to state. Um, and uh, yeah, thanks for sticking through kind of a long one tonight, everybody, and, and coming out. And uh, just uh, keep an eye on your emails for any communication about um, potentially putting a delegation together um, to help support the, um, the uh, natural gas electricity generation issue. And from there, I, we will adjourn for tonight. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a good night. Alla proxima. Bye.